Hello, my dear students, and welcome to week one overview. Structure and function of cells, which is the name of the unit. First of all, we are going to kick our week by an icebreaker. Technically, that means that you are going to meet your teacher and agree on the classroom behavior, what is okay and what is not okay, and to actually have an actual agreement between us. The second icebreaker is going to be about the STEM. So technically, we are going to focus about how STEM and why STEM is important to us and how can we create an easy, simple STEM project. Then we are going to start the actual teaching process. We are going to start to talk about the structure and function of cells during this lesson. Students will be able to identify that cells are the basic unit of life, explore the component of cell theory. So technically, cells are indeed the basic units of life. They are the smallest structural and functional units that make up all living organisms. Cells have specialized structures and organelles that carry out specific functions necessary for life, such as energy production, protein synthesis, and genetic information storage. Whether it's a single-celled organism like bacteria or a complex multicellular organism like a human, cells are the building blocks that enable life's processes to occur. Understanding the importance of cells helps us appreciate the fascinating world of biology. We're also going to explore the components of the cell theory. So the cell theory consists of three main principles. The first principle states that all living organisms are composed of cells. The second principle states that cells are the basic units of structure and function in living organisms. And the third principle states that cells arise from pre-existing cells through cell division. These principles were established by scientists like Robert Hooke, Schneiden, and Schwann. So having a provided a foundation for our understanding of life and biological processes is huge at that time. Later, we are going to identify and explore the concept of the history of microscope. In microscope, we have two main concepts that we are going to understand, which is magnification and resolution of a microscope. So, a magnification and resolution of a microscope, which means that magnification refers to the ability of a microscope to enlarge an object, making it appear larger than its actual size. Typically, it is represented by a number with the letter X, which indicates how many times larger the image is compared to the actual object. Resolution refers to the ability of a microscope to distinguish between two closely spaced objects as separate entities. It is determined by the level of detail and clarity in the image produced by the microscope. So both magnification and resolution are important factors in microscopy as they contribute to our ability to observe and study the structure of cells and other microscopic organisms. So lastly, we are going to do the lesson check as a group work. So we are going to distinguish between the main objective is to distinguish between living and non-living things based on their absence or presence of cells. So living things can be distinguished from non-living things based on the presence or absence of cells. Living things such as plant, animals, and microorganisms are composed of one or more cells. Cells are the basic unit of life, as mentioned earlier, and carry out essential functions like growth, reproduction, and metabolism. Non-living things, on the other hand, do not have cells. For example, non-living things include rocks, water, 
and air while non-living things may interact with living things and have an impact on the environment they do not process the characteristics of life that cells provide so during this week we are going to do hands-on activity we are going to the lab to actually understand the parts of my microscope and so on can't wait to see you take care